Happy birthday, Lady Liberty. Today is October 28th, the Statue of Liberty's 135th birthday. I'm Toy Insanity. This is Liberty Insanity 7. If you've been following this channel for, for a while, you know that I am obsessed with the Statue of Liberty and collecting toys, figures, pop cultural representations of Miss Liberty. We got a great one today. Cause it's her birthday. I found this awesome resin figure on Amazon. I think it was only $15. It's like uh, 12 or 13 inches high. But I really like, you know, uh, modern takes on Lady Liberty, you know, as if she's a real lady. And here she is with a selfie stick, trying to get the perfect selfie. And for some reason, there's a dog behind her. I'm not sure how you would display this to get the best view of everything that's going on. I think if the dog had been to the side, it would look better. Because you want, to, you want to display her from the front like this. You can't see the dog at all. Anyway, we're going to see what's up because I think this is a perfect figural pairing for what we're about to get into. Okay. This came across eBay. And it's, it's a calendar. It is a calendar from 1986. Any Liberty collector knows 1986 was the centennial, the 100th birthday of Lady Liberty. So everyone was, I, well, they were celebrating the restoration in, in the 100 years, and there was just so much going on. I would love to have been alive back then and seen it all go down in New York City. But, okay, there's this illustrator called Hudson Talbot who did these images, and I had to have this calendar. It is from 86. It looks mint condition to me. Okay, but then, but then I found out he wrote a book, too. Called the Lady at Liberty. Hudson Talbot is the whimsically brilliant creator of the best-selling and rambunctious dinosaur extravaganza. We're back. And it says, soon to be an animated film produced by Steven Spielberg. So these came out in 86. The movie We're Back came out in 1993. Maybe you've seen it, but I love his work. Illustrated graphic designer, New Yorker by choice. His work has been exhibited at the New York State Museum in Albany, the Museum of American Illustration, the Museum of American Folk Art, the New York Public Library, and the Louvre in Paris. His delightful liberty design for Ruby Street, Inc. and Paper Moon Graphics have sold nearly one million cards to date. Yes, yeah, so he's done some uh, greeting cards and postcards and stuff too. But this calendar and this book, we're going to attempt to read this book. It's an illustrated book and learn about Lady Liberty's trip to America, how she grew up and came to be the influential woman she is today. 135 years old. Love you. Okay, but you gotta see these images. This is my aesthetic. 1986 Statue of Liberty Centennial Calendar. Hudson Talbot. January. Look at this. Woo! January 86. Lady Liberty skiing with the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building. I don't, I'm not in New York. I don't know the minor buildings, but ooh, the Twin Towers. January. February. Look, I've had this idea. See, I never mentioned this. I want to do a figure series or a pen series where it's basically Lady Liberty holding something for each month of the year. Something in one hand, something in the other. And I had the idea, I had the idea for February. I wanted to do a box of chocolates and a bouquet of flowers. So I like that he did that. He kept the torch. Uh, though. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. There is the cover of his book. I can't wait to read the book. I, I haven't already read it. I, I, don't, I'm, I, I don't know the details, but I'm excited. Lady Liberty as Marilyn Monroe. That looks amazing. April showers, we put a raincoat on Lady Liberty. I had this idea too for my, for my, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do pins or if I might actually be able to do, um, figures, probably, probably pins. But yeah, that was my April idea, holding an umbrella and wearing a raincoat. Oh my gosh, May, she baking a, she baking a pie. And the other buildings are looking in all oh, the Twin Towers. Oh my gosh. I love that Lady Liberty has a portrait of George Washington and a representation of herself. Woo, that's cute. Oh, there's the, there's the Twin Towers on twin bikes. I love how they just personify the buildings, but what exactly is going on? She's double dating Empire State <clears throat> and Mr. Chrysler. I mean, she took it all off for him. Woo, that's June, and July. That's good, that's good too. She is lighting the fireworks over, over the Hudson Bay. That's brilliant. August. She's at the ball game. Okay. I, I, I've never shown you guys these either. So much coming in the next year for Liberty and Sanity. I collect the Hard Rock Cafe pins from New York. And they have a good one where it's Lady Liberty holding a, a baseball bat. I think I think, uh, I think in uh, the low hand, I think she's holding the bat. And in the high hand, she's got the glove. It's real cool looking. Woo! 
Oh man, September. She apparently done bread with one of these buildings and had a bunch of little mini skyscrapers. What is going on? August, the lady in the wheat field. I just love that. I still gotta find my Gashapon figures from Japan. Two free goddess, because they have they have a figure where she's laying down kind of seductively like that. November, shop to your drop, pre-Christmas season. She's in the back with an NYC cab. December, reading the night before Christmas, do all her little baby buildings. That is cute. There's the dude back in 86, Hudson Talbot. The Lady at Liberty, Hudson Talbot, 1986. Written and illustrated, Hudson Talbot. Look at this, look at this. Paris. <clears throat> I could only have been born in Paris. Paris was the New York of the 19th century, the unrivaled capital of the Western world. It was the great magnet for creative minds where pitched battles for social change raised as Viscount sipped champagne from ladies' slippers. It was the kind of place where a three and a half ton green baby might feel right at home. I loved it. I felt that my time had come. After centuries of being a good idea, I decided that the world was ready for me. Like Venus emerging from the sea foam, I arose from the hearts, minds, and wills of countless oppressed peoples and manifested myself in the genius of a certain Monsieur Frédéric Bartholdi. Papa Fred. I love it. I love this. Okay, that's accurate to the history. About it. Uh, it took a lot of funding. It took a, it took a lot of uh, just making connections with the right people to get it built. And it does represent, you know, the, the oppressed people breaking from the shackles. Okay, Papa Fred raised me as if I were a crown princess in preparation for a throne. Our lives were focused entirely on my destiny. That eventual voyage to a land where liberty was no longer a theory but a fact. I owe Monsieur B everything. After all, he made me what I am today. This is so well written, and the drawings are amazing. There was a sea breeze on the morning of my arrival in New York. I was a little underdressed, and my hair was a wreck, but no one seemed to mind. An air of exultation pervaded the harbor as our little flotilla approached my pedestal. Seeing it for the first time was a pivotal experience for me. My moment of transfiguration from Parisian coquette to American woman. From copper to purpose, I was the new colossus, mother of exiles, our lady of the harbor. I was a role I was born to play. And there's the image from here. Love it. And this, yeah, so that's uh, some of the nicknames for Lady Liberty. The pedestal was built in New York before the pieces of the statue were shipped over. Naturally, I didn't expect there to be champagne flowing and banners waving all the time. The real job had to begin sooner or later. Luckily for all of us, lucky for all of us, I am the outdoorsy type. Yes, she is. And there's our twin towers. As it turned out, okay, this one wasn't in the other book. Oh, because in uh, I didn't mean the other book, the calendar. They personified these as more people, more entities. As it turned out, the job didn't leave much room for physical exertion, but plenty of room for my mind to wander. I could occupy myself for a while by practicing facial expressions. My best ones are stalwart, fiercely determined, and defiantly resolute. Great words. In that order. Stalwart, fiercely determined, and defiantly resolute. But I generally would daydream. Most often I drifted into thoughts about my first day would be like in the Big Apple. Being free in the city of dreams, my fantasies carried me to all sorts of heights. New York, New York, big city of dreams. City so nice, they named it twice. After time, I began to realize that nobody was going to come and tell me to take a break. So in the true spirit of Amer 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 American independence, I elected to take it myself. My feeling was that I needed to experience liberty firsthand if I was to play it with much conviction. After seeing all those fellow immigrants crowded onto ship decks, looking up at me soulfully and identifying, I wanted to go I wanted to go identify with them a little, too. Besides, who was going to fire me? And New York had been calling far too long, so my plan was a simple one. Wait for a warm summer night, take a quick swim across the river, blow dry the skirt, and voila, liberty at last. Yeah, in a lot of ways, Lady Liberty is a symbol of feminism. It's a symbol of a lot of things. Most notably, American freedom, American independence. What in the world? This was not in the calendar. She'd be hanging out with King Kong. That was her first boyfriend, I guess. I began my first day with a tour of the Empire State Building, where I met a rather amusing out-of-towner. He wasn't my type. He wasn't even my species, and his attempts to pick me up were primitive, to say the least. I want to take you to the top, baby. Woo, that's what Mr. Kong said, but after running through his little repertoire of the obligatory macho overtures, he turned out to be rather sweet. He became my first pal in town, and we've been sharing the pleasure of the city ever since. Woo, she done found someone else in Florence. I had heard that no tour of New York was complete without a cruise around Manhattan. How true. The view was stupendous. His name was David, fresh from Florence, with looks that could have melted the copper plating right off my infrastructure. Latin, lonely, and longing. How could I resist? How many boyfriends Lady Liberty got? Alas, his heart was made of marble. Yes, I had to learn the hard way that there were risks involved in stepping down from your pedestal. Apparently, one of them is having your heart become somebody's souvenir of New York. Well, now I understand what Edith Piloff kept singing about. I'm still trying to convince myself, however, that it's better to have loved and lost, etc., etc., but I wonder if I'll always carry a torch for him. She had a one-night stand with David. No! She's like them older dudes now. Despite all my talk of freedom and independence, I was very comfortable with my uncle. Okay. 
okay, they just, they just dancing. They're relatives. My Uncle Sam came to help me reassemble the pieces of my first broken heart. He took me out for dinner and dancing was full of fatherly advice. Take up a hobby, suggests us. Try meeting some new folks. Take up a hobby, like toy collecting. Cooking, I thought. New Yorkers apparently love to eat, given the number of hot new bistros popping up around the town, like champignons, that means uh, mushrooms, and being a French stock, I was no stranger to the cuisine department. Why not give it a shot? No sooner I pulled out my first apple pie from under the door, I began to ring. All my new best friends poured in. Woo! That's brilliant! Ah, oh, man, Hudson Town is such a good illustrator. It seems that everyone in New York is an artist, or at least calls himself her or herself one. Come from Paris, I was used to that, and when my new pals asked me to post for them, I felt like it was all natural, but the results were not always what I expected. Talk about taking liberties. Okay, there's an the image from the calendar. I love being surrounded by art all the time. It really became a way of life. Even a casual little picnic in the park could turn into a masterpiece. I really wasn't a true New Yorker until I mastered the subways. This was a crucial rite of passage if I wanted to attend all the events that make the city great, like the White Cell at Bloomingdale's, the China Cell at Macy's, President's Day at Bergdorf's, Discount Days at Saks, etc. I wonder if those places are even still around. That being said, I hasten to add that I quickly discovered the glory of the approaching empty taxi as well. Christmas in New York is a time when friends become family and hard-edged urbanites that you thought you knew so well can suddenly become five-year-olds who want to sing carols, bake brownies, and yes, hear that story again and again. And how can I blame them? Sharing the magic is what Christmas is all about. For that reason, I never miss my annual date with a certain distinguished gentleman for a late-night joyride. Oh, she riding with Santa, too. Of course, my uncle expected a visit from me at some point over the holidays, and I didn't want to disappoint him. He's really not as stiff as he looks. Well, okay, he's stiff, but he seems to understand me. In fact, he had a rather inspired suggestion for me. Why not take a break from New York and see some of our great nation? Visit some of those folks who live where home cooking is the only thing to eat, and you're still considered a newcomer if your family has only been there for three generations. You may learn a thing or two about yourself and the people you're meant to represent and possibly have some fun in the process. Have fun? Not exactly what I expected to hear from Sam, but I wasn't going to quibble. My bags were packed within half an hour. R.I.P. I, I kind of thought they were setting up for a sequel, but look. High over wine country. They could tell us from New York. You can never get enough awards. Hanging five between the uh, hula class and the luau. I'll never forget working the Super Brawl. A rookie in the Rockies in Nashua pays and have lungs of steel. I've seen the future, and it's on vacation in Florida. The trick to being ladies to never get too roughed. Newport, thank God for Dramamine in the Derby. I felt just like the National Velveteen. So she went to Texas, Kentucky, California, Colorado, Hawaii. Looked like Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky. I think I said Kentucky. And there, I love, that might be my favorite. After an eternity on the road in the name of self-discovery, I managed to drag myself home. When I finally caught sight of the apple, it looked good enough to eat. The centennial was a blast. It was almost worth turning 100 to have a blowout like that. I've always been a party girl at heart. Mm -hmm. But there was more to it than just singing happy birthday to me. You see, my stock in trade is really consciousness raising. Therefore, I was glad that it wasn't just liberty the statue that was being celebrated, but liberty the concept. That's what I'm talking about. Living, working, struggling, and rejoicing in freedom. The deep feelings aroused by this issue deserve our most articulated expression. We decided to say it with dynamite. Well, it has been quite a century, and I'm glad to report that despite a few scrapes and bruises, the American dream is still standing in pretty good shape. Life here, as exciting and unpredictable as ever, liberty hasn't thrown in the towel just yet, and the pursuit of happiness still keeps us dancing toward the future. What an amazing book. What an incredible lady. Love learning her backstory, and I certainly hope to be around for the Bicentennial. Oh my gosh. 2086. Happy birthday. Thumbs up. Love you all.